Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. I once again welcome you to MSP lecture series on main group chemistry. Uh, in my last lecture, uh, I was discussing about uh, the writing MO diagram for heterodiatomic molecules. So, let me continue from where I had stopped. So, let me write MO diagram for CO2 molecules. You do not often come across the MO diagrams in uh, standard textbooks for molecules such as CO2, BH3, H2O and all those things. At most you may see MO diagrams for NO, CO and not beyond that one. So, that is the reason I am giving you some triatomic or polyatomic molecules and explaining their bonding and analyzing from both valence point point of view, VSEPR theory point of view as well as molecular orbit diagram and this can clearly give the idea about which one is more refined, which one will be which one is more informative. Of course, there is no doubt that molecular orbital theory gives the complete picture of a molecule including its reactivity everything. So, let me continue with writing MO diagram for CO2. So, now let me consider here 2 p x and 2 p y ok and then this is for carbon ok and then I am considering uh, for oxygen. by G by U, you may be wondering what is this one. So, it is essentially ok, this is anti bonding, this is bonding. So, bonding is un garad whereas anti bonding is symmetric. So, Garad that is the reason this uh, subscript is coming here and this is the combination of combination of 2 p x orbitals. Similarly, I will write combination of 2 p y orbital. I have omitted p z because p z is involved in making sigma bond. So, I am just omitting that part that is very that is similar to most of the molecules we come across. So, here combination of two P Y orbital. Okay, so both represent O here. Okay, and now this is for C O two. Let me write here M O. The first one will be here. This is pi U of them and then we have here almost non bonding because pi this is both are pi u. So, that this remains as non bonding and now let me write here pi u we connect them.
ok. So, now we have to put these 8 electrons here. So, this is the MO diagram for CO2 here, this is for oxygen, this is for CO2, okay. So, one should be able to write a simplified MO diagram for CO2 in this fashion. So, now let me write MO diagram for another interesting molecule BF3, okay. And, and uh, BF3 is a Lewis acid, very strong Lewis acid. Of course, uh, it is not stronger compared to BCL3. So, those things also we can analyze uh, after writing the MO diagram. And while writing MO diagram, I mentioned that to minimize complications, all ligand orbits are put together and considered as ligand group orbitals. So, now we have to consider B boron atom combining with 3 fluorine atoms and each fluorine is coming with 2s and 2p4 orbitals. So, total of 12 orbitals are coming from fluorine and 4 orbitals are coming from boron. And now, uh, these 12 fluorine orbitals are together called ligand group orbitals. So, this one should remember all the time. So, here what we have is 2 p and then 2 s and then here we have ligand group orbital are considered total there are 12 are there. Okay. So, these are all called ligand group orbitals. I had already mentioned how we are taking 12 here. So, each f has 2 s and 2 p that is 1, 1, 1, 1, 4 orbitals are there and 4 into 3 f are there. So, 3 we will get totally 12 atomic orbitals from fluorine are participating in making BF3 molecule, okay. So, while writing MO diagram, we are considering 12 uh, fluorine atomic orbitals and 4 boron atomic orbitals, a total of 16 atomic orbitals are involved in writing MO diagram for BF3. Out of this one, let us start writing and I would tell you about those. The first one is here. So, this is boron atomic orbital 2 p and 2 s and here F 3 fragment. Okay. So, here is the first one and then we have 2 and then we have 1 here and then here we have 8 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They are essentially coming from here and they are essentially 8 and then we have 1 here and 2 here and 1 here. Okay. So, this is A 1 prime and this is E prime and this is A 2 double prime and this is non bonding and then A 2 A 2 double prime star and similar E prime star and then A 1 star. Okay. So, now, so A 1 so, this one is A 1 and we are, we are 2 p x, let me write here, uh, first let me write here A 2 prime and E prime and A 1 prime and A 1 prime. So, this is A 1 prime is already 
I have given here. So, so a 1 prime I have given 2 s and this a this is p z and this is together p x and p y. Okay. So, this is how it is 2 p has 2 type of orbitals p x and p y forming e prime whereas, a 2 double prime is p z. So, now let me start connecting wherever it is there. So, a 1 okay, and then a 1 here and of course, all of them should be connected here and E and then E comes here and A 1 comes here and comes here and A 1 is also E 1 goes here, E 1 goes here. So, this is the MO diagram writing is completed. So, now we have to write the electrons, we have to fill them. We know that we have here 2 s 2, 2 p 1, we have 3 electrons are there, 3 electrons are there. Here we have, we have about uh, 5 plus 7, 21 electrons are there, 21 electrons are there. From each one, we have 7 electron s 2 p 5. So, out of that one, one electron comes here. So, uh, 3, if it is something like this. So, this essentially makes covalent bond with this one. So, we have like this 6 electrons. This 6 electrons whatever I have written, it represents the BF 3 molecule. Okay. So, now there is a, a small magnitude of pi bonding is there with one of the fluorine atoms. So, those 2 electrons will come here. So, due to this one what happens now BF 3 has is 8 electrons and also it has a pseudo octet electronic configuration. So, these 2 electrons are essentially coming from one of the pi orbitals of the 2 p x or 2 p y. So, that comes as a result what happens now we have 8 electrons otherwise it will be very simple it will be like having s p 2 hybridization and 3 sp2 having one electron each of boron interacting with 2 p orbitals to form 3 covalent bonds. Whereas, here the fourth pair here this is due to the pi bonding, pi bonding from fluorine to boron that gives a pseudo octet electronic configuration to remove its electron deficiency for this region it is slightly less Lewis acidic compared to BCL 3 such provision is not there in BCL 3. Now, remaining 8 occupied molecular orbitals there, 8 occupied molecular orbitals there okay, with essentially non bonding character, they are essentially non bonding character. Okay, so, they are essentially non bonding character that is the reason they are not uh, interacted uh, with any of the uh, boron orbitals, we do not have a suitable symmetry one. So, they remain, so that means now 8 means essentially we should have uh, 16 electrons. So, we should account for now 16 electrons. Let me go back uh, to the Lewis dot structure here for BF 3. So, let me write again. Uh, Lewis dot structure for BF 3. So, 3 electrons we have used now, we had uh, 2 s 2, 2 p 1, 3 electrons I have used for making the bonds and now remaining electrons I write like this. Okay. So, total because octet is satisfied for fluorine also 2, 4, 6 and 8. 2 electrons 2 4 6 and 8 2 4 6 and 8. Now, one of the lone pair has gone through pi bonding. So, now how many electrons are left now? We shall count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8. 8 means 16 8 pairs, 8 pairs that is 16 electrons now. Okay. So, these 16 electrons essentially occupy here these 8 orbitals. Okay. So, again very clearly 
uh, if you have any doubt in your mind that how we have 8 orbital here, of course, uh, total of ligand group orbitals are 12, okay. 3 p orbitals and 1 s orbital that means 4 orbitals coming from each fluorine into 3 times 12 orbitals out of 12, 4 are participating here okay, and 4 are participating here, 4 bonding molecular orbital and 4 antibonding molecular orbital, remaining 8 will be non-bonding molecular orbital. Essentially whatever the electrons are there, uh, unutilized electrons of the 2p they remain here, these 16 electrons. So, total of 16 plus okay, uh, 8, uh, 24 electrons, 24 electrons we have actually if we count uh, the total electrons here. Uh, this is 21 plus 3, 21 electrons are coming from 3 fluorine atoms and 3 electrons are coming from boron, we have a 24 electrons. All these 24 electrons are accounted in this MO diagram. Okay. Although it appears like complicated, once you understand how to write, you should be able to write and also you can account for all the electrons present in the entire molecule and also you can correlate with this one with other bonding models we have used in the past. So, let me write uh, one more uh, important molecule MO diagram for that is SF6. So, SF6 uh, if you just recall the explanation of bonding in SF6 using VSCPR theory or valence bond theory. So, VSCPR theory we were giving a geometry of octahedral where 6 electrons from 6 fluorine atoms and 6 electrons from the valence orbital of sulfur a 12 electrons will make 6 bonded pair and these bonded pairs are directed towards the 6 corners of an octahedron. So, it has a octahedral geometry. So, now let us look into uh, the explanation using molecular orbital theory, how these electrons are arranged here. Three s, three p and three d. Okay, 5, 5. So, of course, they have T 2 G and E G symmetry and they have T 1 U symmetry and this one is A 1 G, A 1 G symmetry. Okay. So, that is not important here and now we are using again 6 uh, fluorine orbits we are considering. So, now I am not considering all again very similar to what I did in case of BF3, just for the explanation I am considering only 6 orbital that are participating in bonding. So, remaining will remain as non-bonding. So, here essentially this represent the fluorine orbital having one electron in the 2p. Okay. So, that means uh, we have 2s to 2p5 that I am considering only that one. Okay. So, now here the first one and then we have T1u and then we have here 2 and then this essentially remains and then we have 2, 3 and 1. So, here uh, okay, and then 3 So, now we can place the electrons here, we have here you know, 6 electrons and 6 electrons are there. I can place here 6 electrons here and so 
So, total of 12 electrons are placed here. So, that means here uh, if you just look into atomic orbitals of S, atomic orbitals of F and this is molecular orbitals of SF6. Okay. So, if you just see here the energy of 3D orbitals are too high to interact with uh, F orbitals. So, that essentially it indicates d orbitals are not participating in the formation of SF6 molecule and it is essentially a hypervalent molecule. Okay. And uh, here if you see these 4 electrons are coming from F essentially remain as non-bonding here. Okay. So, this is how you can write the structure whereas in case of valence bond theory we depicted SF6 having sp3 d2 hybridization and this sp3 d2 having one electron each will interact with 2 p orbital of fluorine to form 6 covalent bonds they are disposed towards 6 causes of an octahedron. But here if you just look into a mo diagram the energy of 3 d orbitals are too high to interact with f orbital as a result 4 electrons coming from uh, F having essentially E g symmetry, E g symmetry do not really interact with E g of this one they remain as non-bonding. Okay. So, this is how one can write the MO diagram and uh, compare this with other bonding theories. Okay. So, let us look into ozone molecule and ozone molecule one can write down the electronic configuration I have shown there you can see clearly here. Uh, here uh, 6 electrons are there and it has 4 electrons and 6 electrons that means here essentially the octet of these two terminal oxygen atoms are satisfied whereas this one has only 6 electrons. So, here what happens one of the electron from this one one oxygen and another electron from this one essentially getting delocalized over O O O bond okay. and hence it stabilizes. Once you put these two electrons here you can see all three oxygen atoms will be having octet. Okay. So, this is how you can write MO diagram yeah, you can show the interaction of uh, orbitals uh, to form this kind of 3 center 2 electron bond to satisfy its octet. So, now let us uh, summarize all the bonding concepts we came across. First we began with Lewis model. Lewis model gives emphasis for S2 P6 electronic configuration that means octet each and every element has a tendency to have okay, main group elements I am referring to have S2 P6 electronic configuration okay, so that they can have next inert gas electronic configuration attain their stability. So, the octet model is given important whereas, VACPR theory uh, gives emphasis for steric number and steric number is nothing but the number of bonded pairs, but number of uh, lone pairs and how we essentially we can dispose these steric numbers uh, from the central atom away from each other to minimize interaction that results in a particular standard geometry and when we do not consider lone pairs we get the shape of the molecule. And then valence bond theory talks about hybridization concept it is fantastic it can explain everything about a molecule especially when it comes from the main group elements. Only the problem is with the coordination compounds where it cannot explain spectral properties, color magnetic properties and other things relative strength of the ligands and molecular, molecular orbital theory essentially gives all aspects related to a molecule that means bond distances you can talk about bond distances okay you can correlate the bond distances and bond strengths and reactivity magnetic properties without any problem without any flaw so molecular orbital theory is more refined and it is more informative compared to any of the bonding theories we come across. And conceptual steps one can use in bonding can begin from the molecular formula one should write first molecular formula and then write Lewis structure 
and then try to use VACPR model to predict geometry and shape, then go for valence bond theory using hybridization concept and then eventually proceed to molecular orbital theory to know more about these molecules. Okay. For example, now if I ask a question why atoms combine? You can say simply to form molecules and then if I ask again why molecules are formed? Because atoms are combined. That means essentially why atoms combine to form molecules? The reason is very simple. Some atoms have a tendency to lose electrons from their valence shell and some elements have a tendency to gain electrons into their valence shell. That means when they have tendency to lose electrons they become positively charged they are called cations. When they have a tendency to gain an electron essentially they will be having one extra electron they are called anions or they form anions usually non-metals. And once when they have ability to share their valence electrons they form a covalent bond. So, ions formed by main group elements are usually isoelectronic with a one of the nearest noble gases. Okay. So, now I have given uh, some bond energy for uh, all kind of bonds here. We have ionic bonds, covalent bonds, again covalent bonds we have single bond, double bond, triple bond like we come across in methane, ethylene or alkyne and again we have hydrogen bond and phosphate bonds in ATP and also there is some value is also given for human chemical bond. You can see ionic bonds are much more stronger, the energy is anywhere between 700 to 4000 kilo joules per mole or you can convert that into kilo calories per mole. Essentially 1 kilo calories per mole is equal to 4.1840 kilo joules per mole. I repeat again 1 kilo calorie per mole is equal to 4.1840 kilo joules per mole. So, you can always use that one for conversion and single bonds will be having energy anywhere between 200 to 500 kilo joules per mole whereas double bonds will have anywhere between 500 to 700 and triple bonds have energy between 800 to 1000 kilo joules per mole. And when we look into individual hydrogen bond anywhere they have energy between uh, bond energy 10 to 40 kilo joules per mole and phosphate bonds have anywhere between 25 to 60 and human chemical bond also they have given a value it stays around 7 to 6 kilo joules per mole. <coughs> So, now covalent bonds I have shown two atoms each contribute one electron both of them share these two electrons. For example, you can see covalent molecules such as F2 and again when we make covalent bond we have polar covalent bond as well as non polar covalent bond. And if the electronegativity difference between the two atoms is minimum or or in case of homodiatomic molecule it is essentially non polar covalent bond when the electronegativity difference is larger that results in polar covalent bond and if it is too much larger then that results in ionic bonding. So, those are the three category of bonding I have shown here in this one. So, non polar covalent bonds equal sharing and polar covalent bond unequal sharing. This happens when the electron negativity difference is marginal or little more and whereas ionic bond transfer of electron it happens between the most electronegative elements with most electropositive elements that means alkaline earth metals or alkaline metals with halides is an ideal example for them. And then I have also listed uh, some bond uh, energies here bond enthalpies in this uh, table you can see here uh, lot of interesting data is available we shall discuss all these things as and when we come across when I start discussing the chemistry of uh, main group elements group wise. Once uh, the bonding concept is over, now more or less I have completed the structure and bonding concepts. In my next lecture, I will be discussing about the chemistry of hydrogen. Once that is done, I will be proceeding to the chemistry of main group elements by group wise that is alkali metals and alkaline earth metals then group 13 elements like that I continue until I complete group 18 that is inert gas chemistry. So, let me stop at this juncture and I wish you a pleasant chemistry reading. Thank you very much.
स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया